Okay, folks, here we are. We're in the booth of truth and we're in chapter 28 of the commentary Corinthians by R.J. Rush Dooney. And the title is Authority. So let's make sure we're armed. Uh, we're locked, we're ready to go and let's go. 28. Authority. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 1 to 16. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of woman... The head of every man is Christ, and the head of woman. Okay, that's wrong. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying, Christ, and the head of the woman is the man. Have to be careful because it doesn't just woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoureth his head. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, dishonoureth her head, for that is even all as if she were shaven. Or prayeth or prophesieth with just have to be careful not to put it too near the edge with this. Woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, dishonoureth her head, for that is even all one as if she were shaven. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought the woman, ought the woman, I was expecting women, but neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man, in the Lord. For as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman, but all things of God. Judge in yourselves, is it comely that a woman pray unto God uncovered? Doth not even nature itself teach you that, if a man hath long hair, it is a shame unto him? But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory for her, for her hair is given for her, for her hair, for her. Him unto him. But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory for her, for her hair is given her for a covering. But if any man seem contentious, we have no such custom, neither the churches of God. In these verses, Paul turns to the matter of the necessary and rightful subordination of things one to another. There is an order to life which is God-given. The whims of a child cannot be given priority over the father and the mother. It is significant that the 1950s were known as the child-centred years, and they led to the student rebellion and riots of the 1960s, the sexual revolution and all the disorders of our time. We cannot alter God's order without consequences. So the child cannot have priority over the parents. Priority does not mean a moral or intellectual superiority. In our time, feminists are resentful of male authority and often talk of men as irresponsible because of their masculine position. Men are not independent, in fact, the greater the authority, the greater the, res 
Still in position. Men are not independent. In fact, the greater the authority, the greater is the responsibility and accountability. As our Lord says, as our Lord tells us, as our Lord tells us, as our Lord tells us. You see, uh, let me check that. Automatic crossfades enabled. I hate it, automatic. Automatic crossfades enabled. Clip. So I wonder, is there um, uh, something in the clip here? Data effects, memory, multi-track. Synchronize, use embedded automatically. Oh, yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. The greater the authority, the greater is the responsibility and accountability. As our Lord tells us. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. Luke chapter 12, verse 48. Our understanding of life is childish until we understand this fact, that authority and accountability go hand in hand. Both men and women who fail to recognise this are foolish. Moreover, subordination is basic to life. All men are subordinate to God, and also to one another in terms of their daily lives. Whether in one's vocation, in the church, in the state and in society, Life means a continual change from one status of insubordinate. Whether in one's vocation, in the church, in the state, and in society. Okay, I got you. Oh, life. Whether in one's vocation, in the church, in the state and in society, life means a continual change from one status of subordination to another for men, whereas a woman's spheres of subordination are not as extensive. Paul says, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Verse 1. In conscience and in practice, they must seek, like Paul, to be under authority. The goal of the Christian life is not a libertine freedom from responsibility, but a recognition of authority and of godly subordination. Paul then praises the Corinthians because, despite their rebelliousness, they do seek his counsel and are mindful of his authority. They do respect the ordinances he delivers unto them. Verse 2. Having said this, he immediately moves to correct their lawless attitude towards the status of men and women. Mm. They do respect the ordinances he delivers unto them. Verse 2. Having said this, he immediately moves to correct their lawless attitude toward the status of men and women. At that time, in the Greco-Roman world, Ideas of sexual equality and freedom were very prevalent. There was a breakdown in family life and authority, in chastity and in morality generally. Homosexuality and abortion were rife. Men often wore their hair long, and so on and on. We see a like trend today, clearly. Paul's response to this is to set forth the biblical line of authority. Man's head, or... <clears throat> Man's head. Paul's response to this is to set forth the biblical line of authority. Man's head or ruling authority must be Christ, and woman's must be man. Verse 3. Over all is God, the triune. I was. I've never seen the phrase the triune. Deep must be Christ before, and woman's must be man. Verse 3. Over all is God, the triune head. Paul's answer is theological. Things ultimate must govern all of life and thought. In no way can the creature question the Creator's order. As a result, no man can. 
that was an inward burp there it was a burp reflux bad juju burp reflux in no way can the creature question the creator's order as a result no man can whether in a church service or in an informal christian meeting either pray or prophesy that is declare the meaning of god's word with its head covered he thereby dishonors his head verse 4 that is he dishonors himself and god it is not modesty for a man to feel to honour God and the authority God has given him. If a man feels to be what God intends him to be, he does dishonour the status and authority given him. Similarly, if he abuses that authority given him by God, he brings dishonour on himself. Likewise, any woman who prays or speaks about God's word at a woman's meeting, for example, with her head uncovered, dishonours herself. It is the same as if she were shaven. Verse 5. This last sentence is important. Over the centuries, a common punishment for an adulterous woman was to shave her head. Paul's use of this image means that he saw such behaviour as lawless. A man keeps his head uncovered in worship because he is the image and glory of God, whereas the woman is the glory of man. Verse 7. The woman who has her head uncovered is comparable to one whose head is shaven. Verse 6. There is a creation order, man having been created first, and then woman. Verse 8. The man was not created for the woman, but for God's sovereign purpose, and the woman created as man's helpmate. Verse 9. In that purpose. Verse 10 is very important. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Now the word translated as power is the Greek word exousia. Authority, not dunamis. Power. So it would read better, has authority on her head because of the angels. This means that a woman's longer hair and veil is at one and the same time not only a sign of subordination, but also of authority. To illustrate, we can have a commission from a great power, but if we fail to carry it, we have no such power nor authority. Similarly, if a woman fails to rely on her sign of subordination, she also fails to claim the authority which is rightfully hers. The angels have great authority under God. The authority of women is comparable in that God has ordained for them their own spheres of authority. In Proverbs chapter 31, verses 10 to 31, we see how extensive is the authority and power of a godly woman. Her subordination to men in the family and in the church does not mean impotence nor irrelevance. 31, we see how extensive is the authority and power of a godly woman. Her subordination to men in the family and in the church does not mean impotence nor irrelevance. In verses 11 and 12, Paul reminds us of God's priority. On all levels, it is God's authority and word which must prevail, not man's. This applies to Christian and non-Christian alike, because God is the creator of all. Paul, in verses 13 to 15, appeals to common knowledge of human societies other than those in decay, that these, however fallen, still observe an order whereby men are the heads of families and women are associated with them, but in a secondary role. Moreover, except in decadent societies, men's hair is short and women's long. Women's long hair is like a permanent veil. Paul in verse 16 says that we, that is the apostles, know of no other acceptable practice, and the same is true of all other churches of God. At that time the Gentile churches were still few. The Jewish congregations had a better sense of order. This fact is an important one. The breakdown of the Greco-Roman culture was leading to a decay of standards in all areas of life and thought. The old order was not unlike what 20th century leaders envision as a new world order. Thus, 
The entrance of Christianity into such a world scene was... ...envision as a new world order. Thus, the entrance of Christianity into such a world scene was most significant. The battle between the city of God and the city of man, the dream of Babel or Babylon, was joined. Over the centuries, again and again, the two cities have been in total war, one against the other. This is certainly true in our day. The revel of... the revelance. One against the other. This is certainly true in our day. The relevance of Paul's letter is very great. I say, that's jolly good. Boom, baby, let's go. Yeah, buddy. Oh, how beautiful and how wonderful this program is, now that it's not rubbish. Okay, people, um, that's a verse to chew over. Oh, the wonderful hope of understanding the scriptures. Oh, wonderful, wonderful hope. Well, onwards and upwards. I'll see you in 29.